All right, everybody, welcome to the History of Gaming uh, course elective at Sequoia High School. Uh, to start out, we're going to learn the history of computers and how computers were created, evolved over time, which uh, led to the result of the development of video games. So our first lesson, part one of the history of computers, is the Jacquard's, uh, or the Jacquard loom. What I want you to do in the beginning of each uh, each lesson here, I want you to write for discussion. Um, so j pause the video, feel free to jot down a few things that come to mind. What do you think of when you hear the word computer program and what type of programs are there? So again, feel free to pause, jot some things down, and when you submit your work, I look forward to reading your responses. Feel free to resume the video when you are done completing the write for discussion. So, Joseph Marie Jacquard was born July 7th in 1752. He is the fifth of nine children. However, only himself and one of his younger sisters, Clements, survived to adulthood. You have to remember, this is the 1750s. You know, medicine isn't the greatest. And when you fall ill, unfortunately, a lot of younger children passed. His father was a master weaver of fabrics. In this time period, everyone had a trade. So his father, he would weave fabrics, uh, you know, into cloth and other things. As the son of a weaver, Joseph did not attend school. Instead, he had to tend to the workshop in order to assist his father. Okay, depending on your class, right? Usually, in order to keep the business running and your family fed, the children had to work in their father's trade. His brother-in-law was a cultured man who was a bookseller and a printer. This brother-in-law actually taught him to read, but he didn't learn to read until the age of 13. 13 years old, he didn't learn to read. Just to give you the idea of the life of a master weaver, you know, your, uh, your machines here all made of wood, right? They're mechanical, meaning that you had to operate with your feet and manipulate the strings yourselves. And on the right-hand side, you could see multiple people working in the factory at once, weaving fabric. It would take all day to weave one piece of fabric with the help of maybe five, six, seven others. They even had runner boys, which I assume is what Jacquard would practice with his father, who would run back and forth across the room through the machines, feeding the strings and threads in order to make fabrics. So when Jakar became of age to get a job, his father placed him in a new trade with a master bookbinder. You know, the bindings of the book is where all the pages are held together on that one side. So this is the trade that he was placed into by his father. There was an old clerk of Jacquard's new master who also worked in this bookbinding factory or business. This old clerk in their spare time would give Jacquard lessons in mathematics. So, he not only didn't learn to read until 13, he learns mathematics at an older age as well. Jacquard had a natural-born skill for math, even though he had never gone to school, and he impressed the old clerk tremendously with some ideas for mechanics. Remember, he's grown up around wooden machinery. He's seen this stuff his entire life. Now he finally has a subject or some skills in mathematics in order to apply this knowledge. The old clerk immediately runs to Jacquard's father and tells him to take him out of the book binding trade. He said, you, your son has a lot of skills in mathematics. You need to place him uh, in a more suitable trade for these mechanical abilities. His father agrees after some time and places him with a master type founder. Okay, type founders are the ones who would place the letters, you know, onto paper to create documents. So it was considered a step up in terms of the trade world. And the more I look at these pictures of Jacquard, I can't help but realize or believe that he is a long lost cousin or relative of Filch from Harry Potter. Very similar uh, in appearance there, especially the nose. 
Jacquard's father ends up dying in 1772. He leaves his apartment, the workshop, a vineyard, and a quarry, all in possession of Jacquard instead of his older siblings. Maybe this is because he realizes Jacquard's higher intelligence, okay, and wants to see the workshop and the vineyard, the quarry, succeed after his passing. So he leaves it with him. On top of inheriting all of these very profitable businesses, he ends up marrying a rich widow. So he becomes even more wealthy. He has a son, and over the course of the next several years, he held many jobs, but none of which had worked out. Jacquard put his mechanical skills to good use, and he ends up developing an addition to the loom. Now, the loom is that fabric weaver with the string, so these pictures that we're seeing back here on the second slide are looms. This addition that he adds now makes the loom usable for just one person. This is incredible considering it took all day and multiple apprentices to complete one piece of fabric. This addition was a very successful invention. Jacquard was destined for fame and success after his first invention swept across the cities of France. However, if you look at that top picture there, the French Revolution interferes with his growth. The convention overtook Jacquard's city of Lyon, but he was able to escape the city with his son and join the revolution where he became a sergeant. Many students ask what happened to his wife. We are unsure if he had left her behind or something tragic had happened when the convention took over the city. However, during the French Revolution, when they join the revolution, Jacquard's son ends up being shot down in battle. Jacquard loses all sense of purpose, not now having lost his wife and his son, his businesses, his home where he grew up, destroyed from war. So where does he go? He returns to the shambles in Lyon after the war is over. Jacquard continued experimenting with loom modifications, traveling to England in 1803 to make a loom for fishing nets, and it becomes very popular. If you wonder why did fishing nets become popular at the time, or why were fishing nets popular in England, that is because England is surrounded by water, right? One of the main sources of food for that country. He was given a gold medal for his efforts, and no, that's not a gold medal in Olympics, that's kind of like a, an award or trophy for his advances in science. This guy in the bottom corner here, Napoleon, ends up hearing of Jacquard's achievements in England, and he summons him to Paris to join the Conservatoire des Arts to work on looms for the Republic of France. Now, Napoleon is now the leader of France. He hears that a French scientist, you know, inventor, is now giving his knowledge and his riches and his inventions to, you know, England next door. He wants Jacquard to return to his homeland so he can benefit his home country. Here, Jacquard studies the great works of past mechanics and loom designers, which ultimately led to his greatest creation. Okay. His greatest creation is the Jacquard loom. The Jacquard loom is pictured here on the left-hand side. And this is a machine that used punch cards to control the patterns which were to be woven into fabric. You could see the punch cards almost on a conveyor belt-like system where the string would be woven through the holes on the cards. The cards were interconnected into a mechanical program. This is the first ever program written. And as the weaving progressed, the cards passed over a perforated four-sided drum against which a set of needles connected by wires would warp threads and they would move through to develop fabric. The movement of needles through the holes in the cards lifted the warp threads, allowing the filling threads to be passed over or under the warp, creating all new patterns. 
Napoleon loved the invention and granted Jacquard a pension of 3,000 francs to move back to Lyons and begin creating more of them. However, this move was not easy. Fabric weavers were very upset with Jacquard and they end up chasing him out of the city. This is because they do not have the Jacquard loom. All of these other fabric weavers throughout the city are making one piece of fabric a day over the course of many hours with the help of several employees. Jacquard is making multiple fabrics in one day all by himself. They are not happy about his success. They feared that his new invention would make them lose their jobs and their businesses. However, after being chased out of the city several times, against all these odds, his manufacturing of the loom becomes very successful. It sweeps the nation. Jacquard ends up dying in 1834, but his loom became famous. Over 30,000 looms existed in Lyons alone, and many existed outside of the city as well. Over 30,000 in his city alone. Jacquard looms are still in use today, and they are the source of exquisite fabrics for furniture. Here's a closer look at these punch cards, and these punch cards would be hung on the wall and placed back on the machine to duplicate patterns exactly the same instead of trying to recreate them by hand. And as you could see, Here's the strings being woven into these neat fabrics created by the punch card programs. Okay. I hope you've been filling in your red words into your workbook. I'll see you for lesson two.